Har har hardy har har. Yes, we are having a comedy special tonight on DXP today. It is going to be an hilarious one. So grab your popcorn, get ready and believe. Um, I've got some wonderful people in the studio as well. Do we, Ash? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Amy? Yes, you ready? we do. All right, let's see what else <laughs> is coming up on the show. Faris caught up with Bassem Youssef, the John Stewart of the Arab world, to challenge him on some quintessentially Dubai experiences. And we've got talented singer Jessica Alves joining us in studio. Guys, I'm very excited for tonight's episode because we have so many wonderful guests coming on the show. Plus, we are discussing the Abu Dhabi Comedy Festival. The Dubai one just got over. Fans of comedy? Enjoy a bit of comedy, Lane? Of course, of yeah. course. Who would you say is your favorite stand-up comedian of all time? Ah, oh, that's hard, man. Like, there's so many fantastic, I'm old school in that sense. I love Richard Pryor, mm. uh, Red Fox. Uh, these are names a lot of people that weren't gonna know. Um, but a lot of people that turned, they were actors, um, they were comedians, and they've turned into many different things. Eddie Murphy, obviously, legend in the game. So many. You love Eddie Murphy, don't you? I love Eddie Murphy, but I mean, I'm not really the best one to ask about comedy. Like, I always need the joke dissecting, and then it's not funny anymore. You know, like typical blonde over here. I don't get it. Like, so. well, it depends. It depends. On, it depends on where about the comedy is coming from, right? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, like tonight is a fantastic show because we're we're looking at local talent, which is amazing. Yes. Um, but international, you 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 do have to know and understand, uh, understand a lot it. of the dynamics. Absolutely. Exactly. Now, my favorite comedians, you probably wouldn't expect that from me, but funny enough, I really love Jimmy Carr. Don't watch his recent Netflix special, it is terrible. But yeah, <laughs> I know you wouldn't take me for a Jimmy Carr kind of girl. No. I love Jimmy Carr. I love Jim Jeffries. I mean, I have that kind of weird, I don't know, really. Aussies and Brits. <laughs> You like the offensive humour. Yes, I like <laughs> offensive humour. Yes, exactly. Plus, uh, Dave Chappelle is coming of to town. Of course. But you know what I really exactly. love? If you look on social media, there's a lot of focus on the Dubai culture, comedy inspired by, you know, some of the behaviours and nationalities who live in Dubai. And that's exactly why I'm excited to find out who our guest co-host tonight is. Hello, my name is Sean Chidiak, also known as My Parents Are Divorced on Instagram also known as split personality disorder. Uh, excited to see you guys at the studio. Now, later, tomorrow. I don't know when. Camera's moving. Take it easy. <laughs> yes, Sean will be joining us right here in just a little bit. But first, ahead of the Abu Dhabi Comedy Festival, Faris caught up with renowned comedian Bassem Youssef as he explored some of the exciting adventures in the city. So let's take a look. It is a beautiful day in Dubai, and I'm gonna have the best day ever. And I'm gonna be joined by a very special friend right here on DXB Today. Basim, how are we feeling? I am having second thoughts. Too. I'm having second thoughts. I love Faris. He's the funniest <laughs> man in the region. <laughs> in the region, in the that's region. a bit of a stretch yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now our co-host today is a comedian carving a niche for himself in the local comedy scene. With his witty commentary on family dynamics and societal norms, captivating the region with his viral sketches and hilarious accents. Please welcome to DXB today, Sean Sidiak, better known as his Instagram handle, my parents are divorced. Yes, bruv. I've never been introduced like that before. I appreciate <laughs> that. Thank you. Right. First question. Your marital status. Single, married, single. or divorced? Single. I mean, divorced by name, but single by preference. No. <laughs> okay, I've never been married. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, I mean, look, that's the thing, right? Obviously, a lot of people um, approach this subject with you and say, right, the name and all so mm -hmm. on and so forth. Has that really put you back and not really want to get married? No, no. I think I, the funny thing is a lot of people assume that like your parents got divorced. Like, is that you have any positive relationships to look at? And no, I, I haven't seen any positive relationships anyway. Uh, my grandparents are married now, I think, 60, 62 years. Nice. Every day they tell each other they want 
to die. You know, like, they're like, I want you to die. <laughs> so, and I think that's love. You know, yeah. I, think, I think it's wishing the other person dies, but really caring about yeah. them, you know? Because honestly, when my, my grandfather went to the hospital, my grandma was the only one who stayed there day and night. And she's there like, if you die, I'll kill you. You know? <laughs> so, like, so it's funny, but the name has no effect on like where I, I see myself. As, nice. you know. Sean, one of the first, I guess, uh, pieces of comedy that I watched of you online was you at the store trying to sell a, a Macintosh cookie box to this guy saying, this is a sewing kit. Yes. And anyone and everyone knows that it's not a Macintosh cookie box it is a sewing kit that was the first skit I watched of yours and it was so relatable because I mean all our parents used a Macintosh box as a sewing kit how did you come up with that idea um, honestly we were just shooting we were just shooting these like skits that I had where I was this like um, Egyptian salesman as a store manager and we had just done one about like um, I'm selling you like a screwdriver and then I end up selling you like the screws the the plugins everything around it and we were walking past it and I, and I made a joke to my friend who was filming his name is Fahad um, and I walked by I was like I was like do you want a sewing kit and he's like that's hilarious and I was like but wait there's more <laughs> I was like just start recording and I was like you want to, you want to make a sewing kit for you he's like what like yeah, use this no problem and I in my mind it's gonna relate to a few people around like maybe some of the friends in the area and then I had no idea that people would like chime into it and that actually happened on a smaller viral scale it happened when I did one when I was in Egypt I was there for work and there was a, a case of uh, slippers, like ancient slippers. And I was saying that like, you know, since the beginning of time, mothers have been hitting you with the slippers from 3000 years. And then I had people from Mexico commenting like, in Mexico we call it like chancletas and like, people are commenting all over the world like, so everyone's mom beat them up, which is great, you know, so we're all <laughs> yeah. therapy together. Um, so that happened the first time and then I realized, like, oh, okay, cool. So there's a lot of things that connect us all together. Um, that you wouldn't have initially. Like, who would have thought, you know, like a sewing box, like well, a sewing box, you see, it's, yeah. it's in my mind now. So you, a lot of it is just improv and freestyling and just making up yeah. stuff on the spot, isn't it? Like naturally, naturally funny. Thank you. I, I, have a, I have really bad ADHD, so I can't even, <laughs> even if I wanted to write, I can't even write. And we actually, we did the Dubai Comedy Festival where, you know, we had the, I think, I don't know how big the audience was, but I know that it can fit up to 2,000 people. And it's the biggest show so far. And so they're like, what are you going to write? I was like, <laughs> Right? What? what? <laughs> I don't know what to write to begin with. So I just like to put bullet points and then just kind of go there and then see where things are. Uh, we were talking go. earlier and we were mentioning like who our favorite comedians are. And a lot of the comedians that we spoke about were like stand up comics. But obviously you do stand up, yeah. but you've also used and utilized Instagram as a platform. Right. So how has that helped you build your following and how have you changed the way that you perform comedically to be able to perform on Instagram? That's a good question. I think the, um, the complication now is that there's two, there's two channels. There's the first channel of stand-up, like it's basically the gym, right? So you have to go, you have to do as many shows as possible. It's, it's the hours on stage that count, mm -hmm. whether, whether it's your confidence, whether it's um, getting feedback from audience and trying out your material, and you have to do it whether it's in like a, you know, some shady place in the middle of nowhere or it's a full theater, you have to do your bits no matter what. And then on, on Instagram and on, you know, other social media platforms, it's obviously different. There's a screen protecting you between whoever is behind that. So the, the difficulty and the blessing at the same time is finding the middle ground, the medium. And for me, it was basically, if I do s traditional stand-up, I realized that my audience didn't like that as much. And if I did only the Instagram stuff, they're also like, okay, but where's the stand-up element? Where's that raw funniness? So the middle line for me is basically just talking about my experiences, which, you know, subhanAllah, I have no shortage of. Like, shoulders dislocated as we speak, and I'm trying my best to limit the movement. So if you see this hand flailing around and this hand stuck, you know why. Um, so, and I use the, the two to um, kind of add to each other, right? So I tell the story, and I tell the story if I went to the hospital, there's a Filipino nurse, um, another Indian nurse, and then there's an Egyptian doctor. And then there's me, and then there's my sister. So there's five characters that I play all in that live bit. Perfect. So that's how I mesh the two together. And I think you'll start seeing that a lot of stand-up comics now are stepping back onto social media. Mm -hmm. um, not just only with their material, but also trying some new things out, trying skits out, trying to do something a little bit different. And um, I don't know if anyone's familiar with Shane Gillis. He's an amazing comic. Um, and he's done really well finding that middle ground between doing stand-up and doing um, his social media stuff or his skits. Uh, and that's something that I'm trying to emulate. I, I would like to try to do something on the lines of Key and Peele skits in the Middle East. Hey, and then, yeah. you know, bringing that to the stage as well. And I actually launched a new show called Same Same But Different. And this is basically a live talk show where it's just me and comedians just kind of um, having a chat together, joking around. And, um, you know, I'm trying my best to open up the channels because, you know, once you have a platform, it's, it's a blessing and it's a gift and you should share that with the people around you. And so slowly, slowly, I'm trying to make sure that I can do that as well, like bring on new comedians, old comedians, and you know, bringing them onto social media and them 
you know, helping me, showing me the ropes with traditional stand-up as well. Uh, Sean, you're a Dubai kid, much like I am, but you're originally... Dubai Sharjah kid. Yeah, Dubai Sharjah yeah. kid, and, but you are Lebanese. Um, that's your ethnicity. I want to know when you do these uh, accents. Canadian passport, so oh, any white... All right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you need... Uh, <laughs> Did we miss anything else? Anyway, um, I want to know about the time when you do accents, because, yeah. I mean, you switch from one accent to another. My, my personal favorite, so when you do the Egyptian guy, the Indian Look and the, the accent, Filipino, yeah. I mean, that is just too good, yeah. I absolutely love it. I mean, it's pretty accent, good yourself. Yeah, I, know, you very good. <laughs> I love it. She's all right, isn't it? Yeah, she can do it pretty good. Well, I'm from India, so it's not that hard. Oh, really? For me. But then, oh, being, but no, being a Lebanese person, how do you get the pronunciations so perfectly? Um, honestly, I just, I, growing up here, you would, you know, you're surrounded by all types of cultures, and literally, my my friend group was. Um, I don't know if you know that show. Uh, was it called? Mind your language. Yeah. yeah. A, a, a classic show, right? Yeah. Uh, my friend group was that. <laughs> we had Iranians, Indians, Filipinos, all sorts of Arabs. We had, for some reason, this really like Southern kid, who like that's where the Billabob Jebediah Jr. this, you know, Texan accent came out from. Um, and being surrounded by that all the time, it, it wasn't just hearing the accent; it was being a part of their household as well. You know, sleepovers and stuff. You hear the parents how they speak to each other, so you pick up the nuances. You know. Like, I want to know, like, if I have to bend over and pick something up and I'm out of breath, how would an Egyptian man sound? <laughs> you know, like, I want to know that level. Uh, and, I, and I love it. I truly love connecting to other people's cultures. So um, I think it's that genuine interest that I have that allows me to absorb more. And I consider it like music. It's like, you know, you hear a lyric or you hear a song, you know which pitch is going to be like a high note, for example. So it's kind of similar in my mind, at least. Sean, there's so much more we want to talk to you about. Please stick around with us. I mean, no. we have the rest of the show. No, you, you're staying. You're staying. You don't get to go. My family is held hostage. <laughs> Time for a quick break. Coming up, we are getting insights into the evolution of the local comedy scene in the region with the founders of Bill Araby. Don't go anywhere.